Oh, hi guys, I'm here with your Bible reading. I hope <laughs> you guys are having a good day. Let's jump off here. Um, we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 18 through 40. Then we'll be continuing on with Psalm 37 today verses 30 through 40 and we have one Proverbs today which is Proverbs chapter 21 verse 27 we'll be reading in the New International Version if you'd like to follow along I'm sure we can open that if you want so you can see it outside oh, I gotta sit by get a bag of eyes I got a nickel on the floor. <laughs> Alright guys, let's begin. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Okay. This is still Paul speaking, by the way. Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants. Which means, in regard to evil, be infants. Act like you don't know what evil is. When you see other people doing evil things that they're not supposed to be doing, like if you happen, God forbid, to see someone commit murder, if you see someone stealing or know someone, they tell you they've stole, people that are drunk all the time, committing adultery, there's just so many different things. Um, you know. You know what sin, sins are and what things are evil. But when you see them doing it, act like you don't even know what it is. Act like you just know it's a bad thing and you don't want nothing to do with it. You don't know what it is, but you know it's bad and you want no part of it. Just like, don't even think, give it another thought at all. But in your think, but in your thinking, be adults. <clears throat> when you're thinking, okay, be adults, which is saying, how to explain this? Like, for instance, when you have to make an important decision, or before you make any decision. Just make yourself think that every decision you make, no matter what it is, it's a very important decision. And give yourself time to think about it before you give the answer, before you, you know, say yes or no, or before you decide what to do. Actually take time to think about it first and think, well, by me doing this, or by me not doing this, or by me saying yes or no, you know, etc., etc. Is it going to hurt someone? Is it going to help someone? You know, think about the consequences and think about the good and the bad. You know um, what I mean. Think. Be adults and think. But be infants to evil. Okay, cause, you'll see, in the law it is written, with other tongues and through the lips of foreigners I will speak to this people. But even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. 
no matter what language the Lord speaks in, nobody ever listened. Yeah, there were certain people through the way that listened, like Noah, Moses, etc. But we're talking about everyone, all God's children, and big masses of people. Nobody wanted to listen to the Lord. They would follow Him for a little while and then do away with Him again, you know? Act like, just forget about the Lord. You know, and they'll start making fake idols and worshiping the fake idol. Even after the Lord has done great, great things to them, they have seen great things to, from the Lord. Take, take for instance, God rescuing the Hebrews from the land of Egypt and all he done for them all the miracles he performed. That's not even half of what God done. He done many, many things for many, many people. And he's still doing them for us today. And he is not appreciated like he should be. Not at all. Not at all. He could never be appreciated enough. We know that. But he sure can be appreciated a lot, lot more than he is. Tongues then are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquires or unbelievers come in, they will not say that they are out of your mind. But if an unbeliever or an inquirer comes in while everyone is prophesying, they are convicted of sin and are brought under judgment by all. As the secrets of their hearts are laid bare, so they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn. I had to fix that, sorry. My computer, stop it. My computer zoomed my... Zoomed my uh, words out really far. I couldn't see them, they were too tiny. Sorry about that. Alright, I got it set back. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation? Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at least the most three should speak one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can only prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subjected to the control of prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Or did the word of God originate with you? Or are you the only people it has reached? 
If anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the Spirit, let them acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. But if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. to stop with the book of 1 Corinthians today. Now we are going to go on to Psalm 37 with verses 30 through 40. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, intent on putting them to death. But the Lord will not leave them in the power of the wicked, or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Hope in the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man, flourishing like a luxuriant native tree but has soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. A future awaits those who seek peace, but all sinners will be destroyed. There will be no future for the wicked. Remember that. There will be no future for the wicked. Maybe in this life, but not the next. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. All right, guys, that is Psalm 37, verses 30 through 40. And our one lonely little proverb today, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 27. <laughs> the sacrifice of the wicked is detestable. How much more so when brought with evil intent? And God will know it too knows what you're planning to do before you do. Alright guys, well that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.